many thanks Fiona for that and um, I'm delighted to have been asked to present this evening on a topic that I have a lot of interest in both professionally and personally um, I hope you find this evening's talk useful. As Fiona mentioned my name is Dr Roland Kearney and I'm a sports medicine consultant in sports surgery clinic. As we know sports surgery clinic is made up of the main hospital as well as the sports medicine department a number of hundred meters up the road in that sports medicine department, we have a number of consultation rooms, injection room, high tech gym, and rehabilitation facilities. And we're lucky enough to have a full multidisciplinary team of both sports medicine consultants, specialist physiotherapists, uh, strength and conditioning coaches, biomechanists, all working in tandem with our surgical radi and radiology colleagues in the main hospital. Outside of the sports surgery clinic, I'm lucky enough to work in a number of sports. Uh, I've worked in golf, both on the DP World Tour as well as the Legends Tour. I also work in GA and also in the High Performance Unit in Sports Institute Ireland, mainly worth athletics preparing for Paris 2024. Working in golf is very rewarding, and I hope that I've learned some things from working in elite golf that I can apply to the recreational golfer also. So today we'll speak on a number of different golf-related injuries. I think it's first important to understand some of the basic biomechanics in the golf swing um, that relate to injury, as oftentimes injuries are a result of biomechanics. Lower back pain is the most common uh, golfing injury in both recreational and professional golfers, followed by shoulder and elbow. So firstly, the golf swing is biomechanically fascinating in many ways. It's so impressive to see a top golfer show the control, coordination, power and precision um, to hit the ball. It's made up of a number of stretch shortening cycles of muscle contractions. And these are an important chain of events with each cog in the wheel providing an important role, trying to ensure that the little white ball goes to the intended target. It's important to note that any weak link in the chain can have knock-on effects, which can lead to either injury or potentially poor performance. At each stage in the golf swing, there is different groups of muscles working in different ways. Not to get too bogged down by the different muscle groups here, but if one or some of these groups are not working as normal for whatever reason, there can be knock-on effects that can lead to problems. Just to give a background of three of the kind of more common um, mechanics in the golf swing that you might hear about, X-factor, crunch factor, and reverse C, and we'll speak to these a little bit a little bit later in the lower back pain section. But X factor really is a nice separation between the upper trunk and the pelvis at the back swing and during the downswing, seen in the figure A here. The crunch factor is a combination of lateral trunk flexion as well as axial angular velocity at impacts and early follow through, seen in the middle picture here. And reverse C is a follow through trunk hyperextension. We'll come back to that a little later. So lower back pain in golf, as we mentioned, it's very common. Uh, almost a third of golf amateurs and almost half, or over half of professional golfers will suffer with lower back pain at some stage. The number of factors that lead to back pain in golf, some are non-modifiable ones that we can't change. Unfortunately, increasing age leads to increasing risk of lower back pain. If you've previously had episodes of lower back pain in the past, you're more likely to have future episodes. And unfortunately, if you're male, you're more likely to have lower back pain also. These are the modifiable risk factors for lower back pain in golf. And these are the factors that can be changed. So this is where management can help. So we know that BMI, so uh, ob obese or overweight, uh, leads to increased risk of lower back pain. Of course, strength, flexibility, and coordination can also lead to lower back pain in golf. And we'll come to this a little bit later as well. Swing biomechanics play a role. And interestingly enough, uh, a study has shown that some carrying a bag actually can increase your risk of lower back pain. So back to the swing again. The swing is a repetitive motion with large angular velocities and loading force that are placed on the spine. We know that distance off the tee is associated with lower scores and in the professional games associated with higher earnings. So something that many golfers are really trying to push for. As a result, there has been an increase in golfers trying to adapt the modern, modern swing uh, technique. And there's much debate in, in golf, as you all know, about which swing is better. There's no right or wrong answer here in my eyes. 
um, everyone is to be treated on an individual basis, really. We know that generating more power and speed, however, is associated with greater distance, but it can come at a cost. If the biomechanics are not right or the strength and conditioning is not right, that can lead to problems. These are three the different types of swing biomechanics that have been associated with lower back pain. So an early extension where the hips come forward into the hand space during the swing as seen in the left box on the top. Reverse C, which is at the end of follow through, we get a, an increased uh, lumbar extension. And then a reverse spine angle where at the end of the back swing, we again see an overextension of the lumbar spine on the left hand side, overextension on the right hand side, uh, so suggested correct spine angle. Again, this has been suggested in the literature. With regards to swing biomechanics, a large review of mechanics and lower back pain suggested that there are a number of factors um, of the swing that can lead to those that can increase the risk of lower back pain. Don't want to get too technical here, um, but some of these are, are shown on the screen. The important part here is that such, such mechanics are important to be identified in those struggling with back pain and working closely with either your golf professional or your golf coach to address these issues in your swing is an important factor in managing lower back pain in golf. Flexibility also plays a role in management here. So we know that increasing and improving hip, shoulder, thoracic, and lumbar spine range of movement uh, can be a modifiable risk factor for lower back pain in golf. So another area that we focus on. It's obvious that strength plays a large part in both prevention and management of golfing injuries. The professional game has transformed over the last decade, with most of the top golfers putting in huge amounts of time and emphasis on strength and conditioning. And the understanding of such uh, interventions has really led to reductions in injury risk and improvements in performances. I think this principle can also be, be applied to the recreational golfer. This is just a, a number of uh, different types of causes of lower back pain in golf that we commonly see in the sports surgery clinic. It can be facet joint problems, nerve root impingement, uh, disc problems, uh, lumbar stress fracture more common in the teenage athlete, and sacroiliac joint problems. So the important here is, was, is that there's a number of different potential differential diagnoses that are reasons for the pain. To try and get to the root of the reason, root of the problem, um, the most important part really of this is a proper and thorough history and clinical examination. We're lucky enough at the sports surgery clinic to have a number of uh, objective measures that we can test in terms of strength, flexibility, as well as biomechanics related to golf injuries. We have uh, excellent imaging facilities as well, which, is for, which are a huge help when managing such injuries. In terms of management, specific management will really depend on the diagnosis itself. But in general, these are the key core topics that need to be addressed with lower back pain in golf educating the person on their injury and on the ways in which they can manage it is such an important part. Weight loss, as we mentioned, body mass index is a, is a modifiable factor. Improving muscle strength and control exercises as well as flexibility is a huge uh, key part to play as well. Swing, swing biomechanics, as we mentioned, working alongside the golf professional with this uh, to ensure that there's nothing in the biomechanics side of things that's leading to the issue in the first place. And then early golf specific rehabilitation. At Sports Surgery Clinic, we're looking up to have access to a broad range of secondary management options if the first line map options aren't working. Um, option, some of these options help provide the golfer with the window of opportunity uh, where pain doesn't progress, doesn't prevent uh, the progression of the rehab. So now just to focus on shoulder injuries. Um, a little bit less common than lower back pain in golf, but again, 18% of golfers at some stage in their, in their lifetime will have a shoulder injury. Mostly an overuse, repetitive strain type injury rather than an acute traumatic injury. More common in the lead shoulder, which is the shoulder, left shoulder in right-hand golfers or the right shoulder in left-hand golfers. Um, number of certain risk factors uh, for shoulder injuries in golf. So overload, where there might be a deficit between muscular strength and flexibility uh, uh, and overuse. 
when we look at the golf swing, uh, the shoulder obviously moves through significant range of movement um, through the swing. In the back swing, there's a large, large um, amount of left shoulder adduction and right shoulder external rotation before an explosive follow through with left shoulder external rotation, left shoulder adduction and right shoulder abduction. So I suppose, again, looking at the mechanics is important. At what stage of the swing does the pain occur? Some potential uh, shoulder injuries in golf, as with other sports, include subacromial impingement, rotator cuff tendinopathy, a rotator cuff tear, acromial clavicular joints, arthritis, shoulder arthritis, or shoulder instability. So many different types of shoulder problems in golf. Some symptoms to look for. So as we mentioned, where in the swing is your pain? Is an important uh, question to ask yourself. The painful arc, an idea of at what degree of movement of your shoulder do it brings on the pain, gives us a good idea of where the source of the pain might be coming from. If you've had any weakness in overhead activities, if you're struggling to lie on that side at night, or the movement of the shoulder joint just isn't right, or if you have some pain or pins and needles down your arm, and if your shoulder feels not fully stable or it feels like it's, it's subluxing. These are important symptoms that give us a good clue in terms of what's the cause of the pain or the symptoms. Again, looking at some investigations for so shoulder injuries in, in golf, uh, as I mentioned before, a really clear and thorough history and clinical examination can really give us a very good idea of where, where the issue lies. Strength assessment and flexibility assessment, as well as biomechanics, are important facets, especially in the golfer, to address uh, potential areas for improvement. Again, imaging plays a, an important role in many situations where access to MRI is often used. And there are other injection options and other diagnostic options that we do have available to ourselves in the sports surgery clinic. Management of shoulder injuries in sport, again, brings us back to the main key facets. As I said before, management will really depend on the type of injury that you do have. Um, but we really try to address these key facets firstly. So educating on the injury itself and the importance of self-management, some strength-based individualized rehabilitation. Movement mechanics, as we've already mentioned in the shoulder, is important, as well as specific golf rehabilitation. Medications can sometimes be helpful for symptoms as well, but we don't over rely on these. We do have at our disposal uh, a number of other ultrasound guided injection therapies uh, for shoulder injuries, including platelet rich plasma, corticosteroids, potential nerve blocks, or uh, hydrodilation. So, what's uh, platelet rich plasma? What's PRP? Many of you might be wondering. It's a form of regenerative medicine that harnesses the body's ability to increase growth and healing factors to improve injury recovery. And how it works is that a blood sample is taken during a as you would have during a blood test, it's inserted into a centrifuge, spun down, and then the PRP portion of the platelet rich plasma portion, which contains the concentrated healing cells and factors, is injected accurately under ultrasound guidance to the target tissue. PRP is shown to, to have less of a side effect profile to the traditional corticosteroid injections in many cases. And in many cases, it's shown to outperform corticosteroid in the long term for many of the musculoskeletal type conditions. And we use it quite a lot at the sports surgery clinic. Now on to elbow pain in golfers. So like shoulder, elbow pain in golfers is mainly an overuse injury rather than acute injury. Um, happens in females more than males. Most of the time, it's actually lateral sided pain. So pain at the outside of the elbow, typically termed tennis elbow generically. So many ways golfer's elbow should nearly be called, uh, or tennis elbow should nearly be called golfer's elbow, and golfer's elbow should be called tennis elbow, given the, given the numbers. A number of risk factors for elbow pain in golfers, again, um, overloading the area. If your grip is too tight or if your grip is slippy, this can have an effect on how tight you grip the club and can have an effect on the tension and forces through the elbow. If you're hitting the ground before the ball or hitting some fat shots, unfortunately that can lead to uh, overuse elbow injuries and impacts through the elbow. And some swing changes that happen over too short a period of time can also lead to overuse injuries in elbow. It's important to consider the neck when 
golfers have elbow pain as this is often the source of referred pain. On the mechanics side of things in elbow pain in golfers, uh, we talk a little bit about the wrist flexor burst, which is really that wrist hinge at impact. Um, those with an increased wrist hinge put more forces through the lateral elbow in the lead, lead elbow, or the lateral side of the elbow in the lead elbow. And then the medial side forces in the trail elbow are increased with this increased wrist hinge. So important to bring this into your golf swing to do so over a slow period of time. Or if you're having wrist elbow pain, just asking your golf professional to have a look at your wrist hinge and to see is there an issue there. Some of the different causes of elbow pain in golfers. So we'll speak more on epicondylopathy, which is your epicondylitis. Um, tendon tear can also lead to elbow pain in golfers. Tendinopathy, uh, nerve entrapment in the elbow elbow joint arthritis, and as I mentioned, some referred pain in the neck. So there's a number of different types of causes of elbow pain in golfers, not just elbow, tennis, elbow, not just tennis elbow or golfer's elbow. As I mentioned, these are the two commoner causes uh, of elbow pain in golfers. So on the inside of your elbow, typically called golfer's elbow, or on the outside of your elbow, or called tennis elbow. Some symptoms to look for. Um, pain and wrist movements, burning forearm pain, pins and needles in the forearm, some weakness in wrist movements can be a, a red flag. Stiffness in elbow movements as well is an important symptom. And uh, next day after activity, elbow pain is another one to look for that might be suspicious for your uh, epicondylopathy or your tendinopathies. Like shoulder and lower back um, investigation, start with a thorough history and clinical physical examination. We have assessment of flexibility and we have, we have strength, flexibility and biomechanical assessment options open to us as well, as well as further imaging if required. After we've got to the root of the diagnosis of your elbow pain, we progress on to management. And again, this focuses on key main topics as we spoke already. So education, a strength-based rehabilitation program, biomechanics uh, and golf-specific rehabilitation. Hope Neil doesn't mind me sharing a picture of him here. And this is Neil showing uh, our viewers uh, some different exercises in elbow pain rehab. There is some evidence to su suggest support braces can be helpful for tennis elbow and increasing grip size potentially is, is a facet of improving elbow pain as well. But again, something to consider on an individual basis. Second line options, uh, where first line options are not working, uh, include medical medication options as well as ultrasound guided injections. So again, platelet rich plasma can play a role um, in elbow pain in golfers. Corticosteroid at times can be helpful. Uh, nerve hydrodissection where there is a nerve entrapment can also be helpful as well. So we do have a number of different options available if our original management plan isn't working as planned. We often use extracorporeal shockwave therapy in uh, golfer's elbow or in tennis elbow. And how shockwave works, it emits acoustic waves or shockwaves that carry energy to the injured tissue. Shockwaves then can generate tissue responses that can produce many beneficial effects, such as pain relief, increased blood flow, cell growth, and where needed, can disrupt calcium deposits in the injured tissue. The combination of these effects can lead to improvements in recovery when used alongside appropriate uh, rehab exercises. So it can be a, a, an additional and management option for you with elbow pain. So if you have an injury hindering your golf, uh, don't hesitate to look for help. We have an excellent team here at the Sports Surgery Clinic and, and we're here to help. I hope you found this evening's talk useful uh, and I look forward to answering any questions you may have. Thank you.